So I'm not doing the welcoming speech. That is Bård Vegar Solhjelt from the NORA, head of the NORA, that will do. But since we are well known for breaking records, we also breaking record this year. Even though it's a digital, again, digital uh, annual conference, we are doubling the number of participants from last year. So now we are over uh, 1,500 uh, that have uh, registered for this conference. So with not further ado, I will then welcome Bård Vegar Solhjell to give the opening speech for this eight DSS2 annual conference. Over. Dear participants and University of Oslo HISP team, it's a great honor to be with you today and thanks for inviting me to open this annual event. Of course I would have liked to be with you today, but video conferencing has also delivered some real benefits in the past year. And since we are discussing digital goods, isn't it time we get, get past the phase where we excuse to each other for not being together physically all the time? I think so. You are uh, experts, you are citizens, and you are activists in the countries we want to partner with. You're all working together in a worldwide community of action to, to produce value for all countries. We cannot accomplish the sustainable development goals without the benefits of digital transformation reaching all countries. To ensure that countries and individuals can gain access to the benefits of digital transformation, we believe digital public goods are a key. Therefore, Norway is taking a leading role in the Digital Public Goods Alliance. There is no doubt that DHIS2 is one of the world's leading examples of a digital public good. And we are proud to have supported HISP and DHIS2 since the early 1990s. And I myself, I use it as an example all the time. Um, they're an important success story in the digital transformation that other countries and initiatives can learn important lessons from. For NORAD, DHIS2 is an increasingly important strategic investment for health, for education and of course for digital transformation. What have we learned from you then? Well, um, universities can be engines of great development programming. That's one lesson. If playing to the strengths of these universities, we think it's interesting to compare the university-led development programs in Norway with those in the US, which follows a very different model. And a second lesson is um, that you work in partnership with countries and institutions like the US President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PREPFAR, uh, uh, the Population Service International, and Doctors Without Borders. Over time, you provide solutions, build support relations, and expand in-house capacity. These ingredients are critical for scale. And given DHIS2 is used for health management information systems covering over 2 billion people, this really is scale. A third lesson, DHIS2 is an open platform. There's a wide range of possibilities for countries to architect the information system they want within it, within it. This freedom allows mistakes to be made, but also promotes flexibility and encourage, encourages countries to adopt the tool and to come up with innovative solutions to local challenges. This is why countries have so widely opted to adopt DHIS2. This open approach this has dividends of a more defined product which seeks to push our users into a specific path of behavior and are generally preferred by sectoral experts like health or educational experts. Another important uh, uh, lesson we have learned is that uh, DHIS2 has expanded beyond a web-based program, focusing on collection and use of aggregate data to include Android, I mean, which is of course phone tablet based uh, solutions and to include trackers for patient linked data. The progressive expansion is clearly of importance to keep DHIS2 relevant to countries. This is what countries want. 
And it also explains, and this is lesson number five, the increasing use of DHIS2 across other sectors, such as education, nutrition, water sanitation, to name a few. Imagine in the future if countries can use a single system of management of all public services at district level. The economies of scale are obvious. We would need to develop IT teams in, in country for one solution, not the hundreds of products used in every country today. And this would allow genuine sustainable development of country capacity, a major hindrance to digital development today. To explore potential synergies between use of GHIS2 in different sectors, NORAD is funding a pilot in five countries to expand the use of the system from health into the education, education sector, from which promising results are starting to emerge already. The HISP network invests time and resources in capacity building as well as research, constantly updating the HIS2 tools according to user requests. As a result, the program has helped build a network of experts passionate about IT and its use in social service protection. Provision, sorry. This means that a range of people all over the world learns to use, modify and develop solutions through interaction with the platform. When COVID-19 first arrived, it was teams in Sri Lanka that first pioneered a DHIS2 tool to track COVID cases. Their prototype configuration and apps were shared across the network and taken back to Oslo, where they were developed into more generic solutions. Now, the University of Oslo supports a series of COVID-19 surveillance programs used in 39 countries, as well as tools to manage the rollout of COVID vaccine in use in, uh, use in further 27 countries. What I find fascinating is how digital public goods play a key role in achieving the sustainable development goals. Together, you have managed to achieve scale, domestic ownership and local capacity, as well as developing and implementing a powerful toolkit adapted for a wide variety of local uses. There is much to learn from uh, the HISP and DHIS2 experience for other digital public good initiatives and for countries looking to further their digital transformation using digital public goods. This is why we are highlighting the education management information system, piloting uh, as important pathfinding activity on behalf of the Alliance. We need to learn that success is built across long-term action. Gradually building a worldwide network of talent bound together by an activist mentality to use digital tools to help people and countries. Guided by strong principle of local ownership and agency, open source solutions and user-driven development. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bordvegar and Norad. And uh, we have a lot to thank Norad for, actually. Uh, they were the first that invested in our HISP network and in our DHIS at that time, uh, and also our largest investors. And we have to tell and to appreciate that uh, only two weeks into the lockdown of Norway, two weeks after 8th of, of March, uh, Norad came up with COVID money that say, you, how much can you consume in order to help the whole global community. So we could really speed up the, um, the innovations as he mentioned already, Sri Lanka, things were already uh, going on, but with um, targeted COVID money. So thank you, Norad, so much. So the opening has been do uh, is done and uh, this is for, for newcomers, eight uh, annual um, uh, DHS2 conference, very unhappy that it's digital. We know how fun we have in our activist approach as, as uh, Bård Vegar um, told us about, and also how much we share and learn, but we hopefully through this conference, 
of, um, of a week in digital way can also uh, be able to share and learn as we have done the last one and a half year. So this theme of the conference this year is designing for data use. Never have so many decisions been made on health data affecting all our lives. And it's not like it's a global south uh, thing anymore. It's a glo truly global. The world is becoming smaller. We are all sharing the same use case. We are all sharing the same worries and all sharing the same demand for having good quality data in order to be able to take better decisions for the, for, the, for the government. So the data use has been a key uh, part of our strategies uh, 2022, but we are now putting a step further to say designing for data use, not only having a focus of data out and the analytics and the quality and the dissemination at all the levels that um, decisions shall be taken, but also we need to find out how can we design for it in a participatory way, on the ground, understanding the situation locally, even leveraging even more on the local innovation uh, for, for a global response. So, uh, and how can DSS2 support that practices on the ground? That will be topics for several of our, our sessions also later today. It has been an intense year for the DSS2 community. And we can celebrate, as Bordvega mentioned, uh, great successes in, in being able to disseminate these um, digital resources uh, throughout the world. With the COVID um, uh, surveillance, the COVID vaccination, but not to forget that we still need to have a focus on the HIS, health information system strengthening, routine systems. And now we are going into a period where it's important to routinize all these systems. So we need to thank the whole DHS2 community for this work, especially I would say a great thank to all the HIS groups that have worked day and night to support countries, to support ministries, to support the region, to be able to have this global, uh, develop these global resources across countries, like the Sri Lanka helping, uh, Palestine with their COVID work and they then just sent us a, a, a best practice use case and we didn't even know they had implemented the COVID surveillance for Palestine. Uh, but COVID is not over. We, we need, we call for stamina, but we also call for sympathy and compassion. Us, some of us that have been vaccinated or will be vaccinated soon, we think maybe it's over, but of course it's not over. We, we can just look to the rest of the world where vaccination processes are, are, are slower and we see more new outbreaks. So we call for stamina, but also sim sympathy that we need to continue the great work. This map you have seen many times, Bordvega also mentioned it, this great global scale. This is the fundament for our uh, rapid response on global resources on the pandemic not only the software, behind all these green spots, which is the scale to countries, is actually not only a software system, but also people. Also a DHS2 core uh, group, uh, HISP group, and so forth. So um, COVID gradually becoming part of the routine, as I mentioned, embedded into the um, routine surveillance system, and the vaccination become a, the vaccination system. And this is all strengthening the fundament of, of our work. So this week, we will not only talk about COVID, or however, tomorrow it will be a full COVID day, but also uh, focusing on uh, all the other cross-sectoral um, innovations. But this rapid de deployment, uh, Bordvega mentioned, this local innovation in, in Sri Lanka already 7, 27th of January, two days after they were able to make an app, a rapid app on port of entry, uh, uh, um, uh, 29th of January, and that was shared with the whole his community and that laid the ground for this global response based on local innovation. They, they had a hackathon, you see the timeline here, you saw it last year, but we still think it's, it's valid. The hackathon with support from UIO, however, doing a lot of innovative uh, apps that uh, cut across all the various uh, use cases within the, um, in, within the pandemic and the flexibility 
that the, that the global group has shown how to be able to respond to change in governmental legislations and so forth that we can celebrate. And it's not history because now we are entering into the maintenance, not more countries maybe, but more how to improve the quality of these systems. But then we of course are into vaccinations. We are all talking about it even more rapid if possible. Again, laid on the groundwork, leveraging the Gavi, WHO, and his col collaboration over years within the immunization and vaccination of children. And to transform this into uh, a global um, uh, COVID vaccination um, support for delivery. So building an existing routine system has been and is it still is our our um, our success. I want to mention that also new countries are coming in. Mauritius and Timor Leste are actually coming in. Uh, we're not having the, the, the groundwork of having a scaled HIS or HRS system in the country, but still are able to pick up and, and uh, doing um, very, very, very good. And that is very, very uh, interesting to see how this kind of dis dissemination and inspiration happens in this digital sphere. And also we could mention uh, Guinea, because we haven't talked about uh, the transformation of DSS2 to be a surveillance platform started already in in 2015 in the West Africa during the Ebola outbreak and later with the CDC supporting that work. And Guinea has been able to use to, to flexibly um, transform the COVID uh, uh, solutions with help of his West Africa, with Central Africa and Sri Lanka in order to respond to the ongoing Ebola um, outbreak that happens in Guinea. So we see the local innovation being so important. And during this week, we will share all these uh, stories and all these uh, uh, data use country stories and inspire people to pick up innovations and implement it in their own country or support their own, their own region. So later today, we will hear more about the data use country stories. And of course, just following this session, we will have what's new. We are all the most popular normally is actually to see what's new actually, what kind of new features are, do we have, both web, Android, Tracker, Analytics, Aggregate, and so forth. Tomorrow, as I mentioned, full COVID day with country stories showing this local innovation and global collaboration, which we are very proud of. As we say, the, the world has in one way become smaller by being able to, to collaborate digitally across all countries. On Wednesday, we look at DHS2 and the broader information ecosystem. We put health in brackets since we have a DHS2 for education session, two hours actually, and also uh, LMIs and logistics. But we will have a special focus on interoperability as well. Thursday is the designing for data use. Uh, in, within a plenary, we will showcase um, a lot of PhD students' uh, research in the research session, we will have an own data use at local level supporting planning, addressing the, the well-known denominator problem. And Friday, it will be what's next. And of course, app competitions and, and the other fun stuff we are doing. To end this, the importance of the DHS2 community. We are sad that we are not together, we are, that we are not able to mingle, that we are not able to go to the island and, 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 and play football and, and swim and fish. However, we have, other, we have a COP we would encourage you, and we have other things that Max will tell you soon, how we can mingle. And almost all of the sessions are actually global community members. We have 163 speakers this year. That's a lot. We will still have the use case bazaar without pizza though, but and the app competition. The COP will be the place you, you question and where you can continue to communicate with the presenters and with the pairs. And this time I really, really hope that we are able to continue to collaborate within the community practice. It's a success already, but more, more like a user support. But we really like it to be a fundament for, for also an alumni for this uh, fantastic conference that we now, 300 participants are, are listening in now. And in addition, the last thing I will mention before I hand over to Max is actually the large variety of daily technical sessions and interactive um, expert sessions. It's, today it's after, but tomorrow I think it's before. 
So then you can actually talk talk to expert uh, interactive, and you can um, be able to 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 uh, communicate also with the um, technical uh, features. So, Max, this is for you. Great, thanks, Kristin. Can you mingle? Yes. So uh, first, we'll talk about the social aspects and how to keep in touch with presenters and other participants after the conference is over. Uh, as Kristen mentioned, we have the community practice, um, which is a um, our platform for the DHS community online, and that's available 24/7 year round. But uh, for the conference, we've created a tag DAC 2021 that you can use to find uh, topics that are really related to this conference. And I'll show you that in just a second. But that's a way for you also to ask questions to presenters, to engage in discussion, including after the conference is over. Um, as Kristen mentioned, we also have a virtual conference platform this year. We're using a technology called Gather, and that's a place where you can go and mingle, uh, network. It's also where expert lounges will be held. So starting today, you can go in there and join one of these rooms. And there you have this kind of video game-like environment where you navigate around and talk to people. So we hope that works. And we're gonna, I'll show you that in just a second too. Uh, Kristen, can you show to the next slide, please? And then we just have some technical information about where to find information on the sessions in the conference. So we use SCED as our main scheduling platform. And you all should have this link and that will allow you to go into different sessions, find a description, see who's presenting, uh, access their PowerPoints where those have been added. Uh, after the session is completed, we'll add a recording there as well. And we also have a playlist for recordings on the DHS2 YouTube channel. Uh, there's a link in this PowerPoint which will be uploaded to SCED so you can access it there or you can just go directly to YouTube and find our playlists there. And all the sessions will be recorded and posted there, uh, ideally within the same day that they are recorded. So with that, I'm actually just navigate some of these to show you where you can find them. And let's see. We'll bring it this. Okay, so now you should see uh, that I'm at the DHS2 community practice site. And we've added this helpful banner at the top that allows you to quickly go from the COP to various sites within the community, within the uh, DHS2 annual conference. So this will take you to the conference website, and this will actually give you a list of the, um, or this will take you to the schedule and schedule, and this will give you a list of the topics on the community practice that are related to the annual conference. So this is the easiest way to find them. You can also just navigate to them like you would normally. Uh, they're generally in categories that relate to the topic. And so then if you haven't been to the community practice before, before the way this works is you click on a topic that looks interesting to you, um, like this one from Bangladesh. You can read the topic. And uh, after you read it, if you have a question or a comment, at the bottom, you have options to uh, add your own comment or add your own question. So if you click the reply button, that will then allow you to comment on this topic yourself. So we really encourage you to do that if you have questions. And like I said, this, these topics will be available for you uh, both right now before the presentations happen and after the conference, so you continue uh, there. So SCED, as I mentioned, is this site, which is where you can find the schedule. So here, this is also an interactive site. You can click on a topic like this so, one. Um, Max, there is someone and, saying that they cannot see your screen. I can actually. So are there more people that cannot? Oh, okay, so yeah. So people can see the screen. Okay. Okay, right. So. Uh, yeah, so this is SCED. So this is an example of one session within SCED where you can find the presenters, you can find a summary of the information that's going to be presented. Uh, we will add any PowerPoints that are related here, so you can then download them later. Um, and like I said, we have our YouTube channel. So this is a, where you can find our videos through the playlist feature. And right here, there's the DHS2 Annual Conference 2021. And finally, I wanted to show you the um, Gather platform. Uh, so this one you can get to actually through SCED. And so if you go to the main event schedule and click on any of the expert lounges or the meet and greet session, um, these all take you to the same place. So we go here to Gather. Um, we will be prompted to enter this platform. And you'll be able to design your own avatar and then join the gathering. And then here we are. So this will take just a second to pop up. And then you can see that I'm in this virtual annual conference space. And so I can walk around. And if there are other people here, like I see that there's one person already here. So you can go and talk to them. You'll see their video screen pop up if they're on video or if they're on audio. 
And uh, when you're ready to join an expert lounge, you go into one of the expert lounge rooms. As you can see, they're labeled on the outside with what the topic of the day is. And then they're able to join the conversation about that expert lounge. And that's it. That's pretty much how that works. So we hope you enjoy that. Um, this is the first time we're using it for the annual conference. So we're hoping that everyone uh, likes it. It's kind of a fun way to get the net networking vibe back and the sort of casual vibe back to the conference. And uh, again, I really encourage you if you haven't used community practice before to go there and add your questions, add your comments, and really think about it that there's a way to keep the discussion on these topics going even after the conference is over. And with that, I think we're gonna wrap up this session. Um, so I will uh, pass it over to our setup team for the next one. And I'll put up a slide with the title of the next session and we just need to wait a few minutes to get ready for that. So thanks for your patience and we'll be back with the next session in just a couple of minutes. And stay on, it's the same Zoom link. And that you can see that we are still innovating, even though we are in a digital world, we try, we would like to do whatever we can do in order to collaborate. And also uh, in this uh, gather, that would be cool. So check it out.